So he keeps, she keeps showing me that it's like a shrine to her, like that there, it's it's a shrine to her, that he, it's it's thinking about her, talking about her, everything is still out that belongs to her, that he hasn't put the stuff away. One, two, three. How long has she been passed? Carrie Lynn Shellhorn is a medium. Okay. She's a mother. She's okay. she uh, an amazing, three, three, three. vibrant, strong uh, woman. And she can see uh, spirits. She can see dead people around her uh, pretty much all the time. I would say all of Carrie and Lynn's work, whether it's a workshop or the dining with the dead or personal private messages, um, are for the greatest good. Her sole intention of this work is to help people to move through uh, difficult times and uh, difficult experiences within themselves. For some people it might be helping them get unstuck from a certain situation or getting guidance about what's going on in their life um, or just uh, messages. Maybe it's forgiveness, um, hearing I'm sorry or I'm proud of you and, and uh, knowing what's, um, what's on the other side and that they're okay it can be very comforting. This, this uh, work that Carrie Lynn does is uh, definitely um, a way to help people to move forward uh, in their lives and to look forward as opposed to uh, looking back. She keeps uh, starting to cry and saying yeah. to let it go, let it go, let it go, let yeah. it go. This all started when I was little. We, we built a home uh, beside my grandparents farmhouse and at the top of the stairs at my grandma's farmhouse um, there was a gentleman that always used to stand there as I was going up the stairs so I remember being little and, and walking upstairs like this so I wouldn't have to look at him and I didn't realize who it was until I started doing this job as an adult and had reconnected with a cousin who had shared a newspaper article of her um, grandfather who was my great-grandfather and uh, the picture was the man that I used to see at the top of the stairs and oddly enough it turns out he used to read tea leaves for people and I didn't know that until uh, when I started doing this full-time and, and dug around in the family tree a bit. So. As I grew a little bit older I stifled it and didn't uh, embrace it. So as I started uh, to have my children, they were having experiences. So as my children at a smaller age were having experiences, it, it opened up that door for me again, that I had those experiences as a, a child too, and, and I wanted them to feel secure in telling me about their, their experiences. And uh, so seven years ago, I started doing this full time, and it's just grown huge. <laughs> since then. Who's going to come in? I wonder what's going to happen. I don't Tonight want to we are going to a private things. gallery you so there will be 12 to 15 people that. there. I want to explain before we get started how this works. Um, one, everybody has to make sure that they're breathing because everybody's holding their breath already. Uh, <laughs> I know, everybody gets in panic mode, right? Yeah. Oh, she's talking. <laughs> um, so you have to breathe. I mean, and breath is so important. It's what connects us to everything. So the more you can relax and breathe, the easier. If you start holding your breath a lot, I'm going to resort to dirty jokes or whatever I need <laughs> to do to keep you breathing. Um, I, I want to explain how the messages come in because I think that's important for people to understand, right? Um, I see, hear, feel, and taste is how the information comes in. So sometimes it's, it feels like somebody actually whispering in my ear or sometimes it's on the inside. It just depends on the spirit that's coming in and, and what their personality is like and, and where they were at. Um, so that's kind of how the information comes in. At the bigger galleries or at the private events, it's super fun because you can see them standing by their loved ones going, pick me, I want to be next, and, and they're waving and jumping for that attention.
I say it's like being in a mall. So in the mall, you have that hum of the crowd. And so I have to focus in on who who's the right person that's needing to come through first and where are we going to go. I did write down some things um, uh, like over before I got here, just in case um, sometimes spirits will get nudged out, which happens, right? If you have another person that comes in that's much stronger in personality, um, they'll push other people out. So I wrote down information in case these people get pushed out so I can get to them hopefully today as well too. Um, I really, I, I believe that part of my job is to um, change people's views or opinions that they may have about this kind of work from what they see on TV. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I have some issues with some of the stuff that you would see on TV as well too. So I want people to see that there's, there's a different aspect to it. So I do a lot of teaching as well too. So how to do forgiveness properly, it, like it, depending on what's coming up, I'll give you the tools that you need as well too, because I think that's important. I would rather people understand how they're trying to connect in with you so that you can grow your own connection with them and not depend on people like me. I would rather people be able to grow that and move on their own than have to feel like they need to keep coming back to me. I don't want people depending on me at all. I have enough children, <laughs> as it is. <laughs> a gallery type event is more um, um, like an introduction to what I do. So the messages are short and, and quick to try to get through to as many people as possible that are at the private galleries. So they're not as in depth as one-on-one. -on -one. When the uncle comes in, um, Again, when I, get, when I get needles in my arm and I feel sick to my stomach and it comes up to my mouth and all I taste is the bottom of the beer glass, the bottom of the beer glass always makes me know that they're an alcoholic. But it's cancer, what he, yes. what he passed from, right? Because yes. he's okay. showing me that it's cancer. And, I don't remember which type, but yes. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll tell you that I feel it all in my lower, like it's, it's lower back, it's all in yeah, whatever this is, it's all in here, right? Yeah. Um, um, again, with the bop in the nose, he keeps showing me angers and resentments. Yep. So there's so much anger and resentment within that family structure. So he keeps, yes. so he keeps coming in, showing me the angers and resentments within the family structure yes. and the discord. There's not been the proper, there's not been the proper healing. The angers and resentments are still being held towards him. It's it's not been let go of. People are hanging on to it. Yeah, yeah. I could say that. Mm -hmm. um, so. Forgiveness has to happen a bunch of different ways. He keeps needing, he needs permission to forgive himself. Was he like... He was not a nice person. Stinky. Yes. It's stinky. He oh. smells. It's like it's like being in, around somebody who's just... Cat litter box is overflowing. Like it's... it's He's very unpleasant. Stinky. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> You're not telling me anything. That's why I said we need to get him done and out of the way. Yeah, oh, we're going to move him on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's good that he shows up, right? It's always the person, like, you probably just want to hear from your dad, but you get the stinky uncle first, right? So, <laughs> Something like that. But it's where the healing needs to happen, right? Because they don't, they don't, um, so an ass is an ass is an ass. An oh, ass yeah. here, die an ass, stay an ass, right? You have to heal your stuff on the other side. And, and as you do, then you raise your vibrational level. And that's what he's doing, is raising his vibrational level for him to show up. Because it's not, it's like being in school, right? He's standing here in front of all of these people and, and people that he doesn't know going, I was unpleasant, unkind, and did all of these things, and I need, I need forgiveness. So he needs permission to forgive himself, permission to forgive the other person, and then vice versa. They need permission to forgive themselves. And he shows me, like, there was lots of opportunities for him to have help, and he chose to not listen. <clears throat> but there's more than, like, really, what he shows me is more mental health, too, right? That there's mental health-related issues as well, too. Oh, so yeah. there's mental health-related issues that he wasn't acknowledging. <clears throat> The dad was mid fifties, though, right? Yep. Okay. So he gives me that same thing: fast, fast, quick, traumatic, unexpected, all heart-related issues. Or really, eh? Okay. I keep seeing hockey sticks. Mm -hmm. It's all about hockey, coach hockey, 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 yeah. hockey. Because I kept seeing hockey sticks and Habs. Hockey sticks and halves. So, I mean, that may not necessarily be his team, but it's just. Yep. He was hockey player. For me. Coach. Okay. Okay, so where's he gonna go? 
so what he keeps doing me with me, he started to take me into a house and then he pulled me back out and then started showing me the back of a, the back of a vehicle. I, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. That's what I said. Yeah. What, what the heck? Yep. So, um, and then, you know, those stickers that everybody's got of like the family yep. on the back of the van. This is what he keeps showing me. Do you have that on the back of your van? Yep. So who's the person that has it on the back of their van? The only thing we have stickers on is our trailer. There's stickers on the back of the trailer? Yep. Okay. Okay, so where do you go north of here? I live in North Bay. Okay. All right. I don't know why he keeps showing me the back of the damn trailer. So then I start asking a thousand questions, right? He takes me, so, um, there's something, there's something about that front. If I'm looking at the trailer this way. One of the wheels is off. Right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Just try to think of what was wrong with it. Yeah, Phil was my husband fixing the fixing wheel. Fixing the wheel. Your, your dad seems to think that he can do all those manly type things much better than your husband. And yeah, he really just so wants to raise him. <laughs> yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> All of that just so that your dad could poke fun at your husband. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> He's not very uh, car savvy. Let's just put it that right. way. Right. Your dad was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He was very. Yeah. So really what your dad keeps showing me is that he's trying to help your husband out yep. and, and help him. If he gets those little aha moments in his head, that's usually somebody yeah. in spirit putting that thought there for you and, and trying to help him be better in that department. <laughs> that's so funny. There is somebody, when I was standing over here, that yelled Sue in my ear. Imagine a world oh, yeah. where you are seeing the physical people in your life, but also a room, maybe a, a room full of uh, spirits who are trying to constantly get your attention. But it was a male yelling out the name Sue, and Sue would be here, not crossed over. Does that make sense for you guys? Yes. Okay. So he would be her partner? Who is he? This? Her father. Oh. And again, it's, so did the loose bowel stuff yes. make sense? Because it's all bowel yes. related for him, because he keeps showing me it's all in his bowels. Yes. Yes. Bowels, it's lower really back. Bad. It's really bad. Yeah. It's very bad. I think that's what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. He keeps making my ears ring. Is it, so this is your aunt? Whose aunt? Yeah, his aunt. Yeah. Your, your aunt. Okay. So would she be open to this? kind of stuff do you think yes, like that you could go and talk to her because it's he's adamant that when my ears get that high pitched ringing sound this is where the teaching aspect is right I think he's totally in her space I think that he's totally trying to talk to her all the time but it's all tight in my chest all super tight in my chest he is so so on so many levels he's trying to get her to relax to breathe um she doesn't she's not connecting into nature like she should be there's this cooped up feel not being outside there's something about being outside with the two of them i don't know what that's all about because i keep smelling being in the woods like you know when it's wet mm -hmm. when the leaves are wet that's what i keep smelling ask her to Put her hand over heart, take the deep breath in through her nose, blow it out through her mouth, and then ask him to take a step back. And as long as she, because I find if you keep your hand over your heart, then it keeps you in that heart-centered space. If you go up and, if you keep your hands down here, you go up here, right? Anybody thinking fear-based, I just want to hear that, I just want this to be real. But if you keep your hand over your heart and you keep practicing with that, it, it, the answers like, is this really mine or is this somebody in spirit, they'll come right away. And he's in her space, like she's... He's really trying to help her. He's very worried about her. Okay. One, two, three. How many? Wh how big is their family? Three. Because he's showing me three that they had three. Yeah. Okay. What he shows me is like the movie Ghost. Like they, their connection is like in the movie Ghost. That that he loved her even if he wasn't saying it in the way that he needed to, but that's how much he loved her. She'll appreciate that. Because he, he didn't say it. 
He keeps showing me his fists and his hands. Usually for me, that's somebody that's working, that works with their hands, somebody that does something with their hands. So whether this is you or his dad, like, or your dad or him, he just keeps showing me working with his hands. It almost feels like my knuckles feel raw. Was he a hitter? No, uh, he was a boxer. Okay, because I feel like I'm hitting. Yeah. He was the boxer? He was a boxer, yeah. Okay. Just as a... a like a hobby? At university, yeah. Okay. At the, at the military. And then he kept showing me, like, with your dad and how he parented his children is much more heart-centered. Yes. Um, uh, emotionally engaged. Yeah. Um, and that he's very proud of how he has raised his family. Interesting. Does that make sense for your dad? Cool. He feels super lovely, your dad. My dad? Yeah. yeah. He is. Well, he comes in apologizing, saying sorry again. It's this whole thing about stifling out people's voices, right? He stifled out people's voices and he's sorry. So again, forgiveness goes four ways. He needs permission to forgive himself, which is why he's coming in. Um, he needs to give himself permission to forgive the other people and then vice versa. Again, whenever I get that energetic Dolly Parton, oh, it's that there's a new baby or that there's um, a younger child that they want to connect with. This doesn't feel like a baby on the way, though. This feels like a younger child that's already here. So he keeps pointing out that younger one that's already here. Okay. Like about three or so? It's younger. Does that make sense? Yeah. So who has the three-year-old? The sister. Well, she's four now. Does she look like Boo from, like, Monsters, Inc., with, like, these little <laughs> tiny pigtails? <laughs> she does? <laughs> Because that's what he keeps showing me, that she looks like Boo. Yeah. Super cute. Super cute. Learn too late, eh? He learned too late. He's missing. He's going to miss out on, on how to engage in a loving way. So he's learning on the other side and watching her. Because he really gets a lot of joy out of watching her. Yeah, super cool. He keeps saying thank you for passing on the messages. The male person that I had earlier that was coming in that I had wrote down, he seems to be coming in now as well too, and it feels like he refused to eat. Like he clenched his jaw and refused to eat before he died. I find depending on how many people are going to be at the venue that I'm working at, the messages could start coming in to me the morning of an event, usually at least a half hour before a personal session starts. I have their people here already talking. Yeah, that was my, my grandfather. Okay. Imagine, he refused to eat for Refu a long time. Yeah, he refused to eat. So I'll tell you, like, I was sitting in my kitchen about two hours or so before um, uh, I started getting ready for here, and I was feeling really tired, so they'll make me feel their stuff. Um, so I was feeling very tired, and I kept feeling it all in my head, so I knew that it was something either dementia or Alzheimer's related. Um, and he, he was in that space for quite a while, though, because he's showing me, I wrote down, like, I didn't know if it was 12 years, but it, it was about that mark right um and that in the end he just refused he refused to eat um your so how is he can how is he it's my mom's dad okay he comes in showing me that he has guilt um that he has um for actions that he did here that he wants to apologize for he keeps showing me within within that family structure so whether it's it's mom and you he keeps making it really heavy in between the shoulder blades that every both for you and mom you get pain in here does that make sense mm -hmm. we took care of him for a long time he was kind of do you get does she get does she complain about her back hurting that's what i want to know yes both my mom and i 
okay, thank you. <laughs> I just need you to validate it when it's making sense. Okay, so, and then don't get offended with where I'm going next. So what the grandpa is showing me though, is that there was lack of emotional support, um, that there wasn't, there wasn't the proper emotional support from him to you guys. And he's showing me that, he, and again, it's the, the, it's the Alzheimer's part, right? Like they really, they leave and it's somebody else mm -hmm. because he's showing me like um, that it wasn't him. So it's the words and the actions feel aggressive, right? It's aggressive. And he's saying, but that wasn't him. So on one hand, he's saying thank you. And on the other hand, he's saying sorry. So he's got this, this thank you for taking care of me and then sorry for all of this. And this stuff um, will lift, it will start to lift when you do that cord cutting. So when, when we talk about all of our experience can create onion layers of stuff. Positive ones help us grow, negative ones will feel um, like the onion layers. When we hang on to stuff, it will make us physically sick. So when we're asking our angels, loved ones, guys, or whoever to cut the negative cords and attachments, those onion layers start to peel away. When you start peeling away, the physical experience changes. So for both your mom and you, that changes. It feels harsher with your mom, though. It's really disconnect with your mom. He keeps saying like he was not kind to her at all. And he feels very guilty for that, very guilty. And this is before the dementia started. Okay. So abundanceoflight.com, you're going to click on Alyssa Mary Rose when you go there. Um, personally, I mean, read the whole website if you feel like you need to, but I, you can go down to the yin yang symbol. It says only love is real. When you click on it, another window opens up and all you do is read that window and click refresh. And it's gonna help you move those negative cords and connections out of the way. And I promise it will help lift, especially with your mom, it will help her back related issues. So is the grandma crossed over as well too? All right. Okay, right. there's something about having this rolled, it's rolled, very rolled mm -hmm. hair mm -hmm. and in place mm -hmm. perfectly. <laughs> That's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like a mold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the Lego heads. <laughs> All right. It's very interesting, their dynamic as well mm -hmm. too, right? Because she pretty much waited for him to, to leave the room so that she could come in and have her opinion heard. Mm -hmm. Is that how it was mm -hmm. for them here? Mm -hmm. Wow. The other thing that she keeps showing me is slippers. So she has her slippers on mm -hmm. and you need to know that she has her slippers on. Is that what she was like? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Okay, which way does she want to go? All right, it's, um, she's making me feel like passing in my sleep as well too. So whether it's a sleep or a coma, she's wanting me to, to pass along that it was peaceful for her and people need to know that it was peaceful. Her transition was peaceful because it feels like there's concern that it was not peaceful for her. Does that make sense? Okay. 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 Um, she keeps showing me like a little tiny dog. Mm -hmm. So is that her dog? Yes. Okay. That would be there because it's running around my ankles. Okay. I have to tell you, like, I'm okay with the dead folks, but when they bring animals in, it creeps me out. Yeah. Weird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so who, uh, she keeps giving me the number 12 again. This number 12 keeps coming up, so. That's my birthday. Okay. I think, I love it when family members, this happened earlier too, where they come in going, oh. <laughs> so she does that between you and her in that connection. That's very close or she feels that way towards you. Mm -hmm. She keeps making me have a tube. Did they have to put, 
because she's showing me that is that's when she got scared. She keeps showing me feeling people whispering to her that she heard people talking to her and that you need to know it was peaceful. That's so funny that your grandma wants to show that she's with the dog and not the grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, just just know that she's with you and, and that she hears you when you talk to her because you talk to her all the time and she hears you doing that. Thank you for letting me do that. She was fantastic. She was really amazing. She was very... Uh, she was delicate with her delivery. To be able to filter in everything that she sees and hears and feels and to be able to relay that, I think is magnificent. Afterwards, or after an event or after a gallery, it depends on how many spirits I didn't actually get to because there, I can't give all the messages. So there's some spirits that uh, follow me home, come home with me so that they can still talk their story out because most spirits just need their stories heard um, and once I can validate their story and listen then they move on so sometimes it takes about three hours after a bigger event um, a smaller event maybe an hour and a half or so